Today we will take a gander at a case that occurred in Minnesota back in 2013. The fact that she was missing makes 30-year-old Kira Steger was utilized as a store representative at a dress store situated in the shopping center of America. Her was enthusiastic about her work and never skirted a shift, so when on February 23, 2013, her didn't come to. Work her collaborators got stressed them, attempted to reach out to Kira, however, her didn't call them back or instant messages, and the police before long informed. Kira K. Steger was conceived November 19, 1982, in Des Plaines, Illinois. She was the girl of Marcy and Jay Steger, who depicted her as an enthusiastic, committed, and sweet little girl. Kira was utilized at the shopping center of America and worked for two stores there, Wet Seal and Most as of late Delias. Her colleagues were extraordinary companions, as well as Kira thought of them as a feature of her family. Kira had a novel ability for perceiving individuals' assets that they personally didn't take note. She arranged and expected a promising future, which looked brilliant and quiet. Unfortunately, everything she could ever hope for finished in a moment when Kira strangely disappeared. On Thursday, February 21, 2013, Kira had a shift at work. Her colleagues said she had been feeling significantly better and wanted to go to a pleasant calf with her better half after the store shut. Kira and Jeffrey Trevino got comfortable quite a while back. They promptly lighted a flash among them and began a heartfelt connection, which eventually brought about a wedding by and large Kira, and Jeffrey appeared to be a cheerful and stable wedded couple. There could have been periodic conflicts between them, yet everything was kept inside their own circle. Neither family members, companions, nor colleagues knew about them, at any rate. After two days on Saturday, February 23, Ard, when Kira didn't come to work, her colleagues were concerned in light of the fact that such way of behaving was not run of the mill of her. She was on time severe with herself, as well as other people never endured being late, and stuck to her timetable having neglected to arrive at Kira. Her colleagues called Jeffrey, however he had no clue about where his better half had gone, according to Jeffrey Kira had gone out the past morning, and had not come back since it wasn't exactly stressing to him on the grounds that Kira tended to vanish for a little while sometimes. She would remain the night at a companion's home or go to an overall's place unannounced one thing that could have caused stress was the terrible climate that day, since it had been snowing intensely. Jeffrey recommended that perhaps there was something that might have happened to her on the manner in which maybe her vehicle stalled out and her mobile phone battery ran out of force around the same time having gotten no report from his significant other. Jeffrey documented a report for someone who has gone missing and reached out to Kira's family. Her relatives were shocked by the puzzling vanishing of their cherished one, and it was a major disaster for them having gotten a report for someone who has gone missing for Kira Steger analysts quickly got. To function as it is considered normal, in such cases, the examination began with scrutinizing the life partner and looking the closest environmental elements. This was no exemption analysts went to Jeffrey's home to converse with him. Jeffrey informed criminal investigators that on Thursday, he and Kira were hoping to have some time together. They ate, speaked, played bowling, and at last left the shopping center by Jeffrey's record. He and Kira headed home straight away as Kira planned to watch a film. Jeffrey likewise let investigators know that his better half gone out the following day, which was a Friday around 8.30 a.m. An occasion was planned working, and her obligatory presence was required she was acting to the surprise of no one, and he saw nothing unusual. Jeffrey found it business as usual, that Kira would vanish every once in a while, in spite of the fact that he didn't actually have the foggiest idea where she— was or who she was investing energy with. They had been having relationship issues for a couple of months, said Jeffrey anyway. He didn't consider it to be significant or disturbing, believing it to be simply minor contentions that happen in all families. The criminal investigator began asking Jeffrey, who Kira may be remaining with inquiring as to whether she could have had a darling. The man declined this idea as he had by and by. 
got some information about this and got a negative reaction, as would be natural for Geoffrey. He truly cherishes his significant other and confides in her. The examiners gave all the data they figured out how to gather about Kira and her vehicle. To the working watches, the analysts went to the shopping center of America themselves to affirm the validity of Jeffrey's words and potentially get a few pieces of information. Shopping Center of America is among the greatest shopping centers overall. It is arranged in Bloomington. It highlights 520 stores, amusement stops, and Oceanarium cinemas. A fairway and significantly more subsequently, it's not shocking that the shopping center is fitted with various surveillance cameras. Knowing at what time Kira had gone home on February 21, the criminal investigators investigated that second the recording showed business as usual. Jeffrey's record turned out as expected. He met Kira after work, and they hung out at the shopping center for some time. Then, at that point, went down to the parking garage and drove away. There were no contentions among them, and the night seemed to have gone fine. Unfamiliar nothing is pretty much as terrible as holding up with no information on what's happening. And with each progressive day, the tension for Kira's life was deteriorating, coming up short on any report from her and having become burnt out on holding up Kira's family, ventured out to Bloomington, with an end goal to attempt to assist with the examination. They had flyers printed with her photos on them, posted them on surveys, and circulated them to passers-by on the road. Their goal was to draw in, however much consideration, as could reasonably be expected, to the quest for Kira. They understood they couldn't just back up yet, needed to do all that they could to find their cherished one. While Kira's family was disseminating pamphlets, the examiners proceeded with their request. While talking, two or three's neighbors' officials saw an observation camera introduced on one. Neighbor's home. The camera pivoted sideways, and in one of its points, it caught Kira and Jeffrey's home. In this way, the examiners requested that the property holder duplicate the camera film for them as they desire to reveal a few hints from it. Meanwhile, a cell organization's records showed up and furnished. Specialists with another lead. As per Kira's telephone records, she had one more man in her life. Other than Jeffrey, he ended up being Ryan Went, who was the chief of a similar store chain in one of which she was utilized. They had an exceptionally extreme and extended relationship and compared regularly. Police had the option to find out that Ryan Went was out of state, and keeping in mind that a quest for Kira was continuous Ryan was going in his vehicle towards Colorado. This man was of significant importance to the examination in light of the fact that as well as having a close connection with Kira, he likewise moved out of Express a similar time she vanished. Perhaps it was a simple incident. And that's it. Or maybe things were totally unique, and his getaway conceals something behind it. The examiners would need to find the response to that question, notwithstanding the analysts figured out how to arrive at Ryan, and he assented to show up for a dressing in Colorado, where he was posed numerous inquiries. He expressed that he last reached Kira while he was driving his vehicle across South Dakota, and traded messages with her. These instant messages had been sent right away, before Kira's vanishing after auditing the planning of the instant messages analysts established that Kira had been in touch with her new darling similarly as she was eating with her better half. It was crystal clear from the correspondence that Kira was progressively becoming far off from Jeffrey. The agents inspected Ryan's telephone to decide his area concerning the cell towers and audited his financial records. It seemed he was truly out of express that specific night and had absolutely not a chance of being associated with Kira's vanishing. He was delivered and dropped from the rundown of suspects on that premise. The timestamp of the messages uncovered that Kira was all the while messaging with Ryan in any event when she got back with her better half. Anyway, their correspondence finished after 11.44 p.m. and from that point forward, Kira's telephone has been dormant in the meantime an alternate group of specialists was preparing to look at the video film from the reconnaissance camera introduced on Kira's neighbor's home. This camera caught a significant part of the road clearing left and right. Anyway, it was turning far excessively fast, 
and that mentioned objective fact, troublesome, since assuming the examiner spotted something dubious, the camera would pivot to the opposite side in a moment. Jeffrey and Kira's home was seen exclusively for a concise couple of moments as the camera moved to the right. Jeffrey expressed that, in the wake of having supper and bowling, he and Kira returned home, watched a film, and resigned to bed, in any case. At the point when specialists assessed the video film, they saw that right after 2A, M. Kira's vehicle switched into the yard due to the bad quality of the recording and the consistent movement of the camera from one side to another. It was difficult to tell definitively what was occurring on screen. Around then, yet the vehicle before long got away from their home. Jeffrey ascribed the night drive to the way that Kira had advised him to siphon gas in her vehicle before her drive tomorrow, so he went to the service station. Shockingly, an adequate number of his story was valid. He was truly seen at the corner store at around half beyond three at daybreak. Anyway, the investigators found that subsequent to leaving the service station, he didn't get back, however. For reasons unknown advanced towards the thruway, it is hazy. Where he headed next, the neighbor's camera didn't. Record him returning home, yet it might have been a simple occurrence, as it was pivoting continually. In this manner, it is conceivable, hypothetically, that Jeffrey might have gotten back home later in the day, when the camera was confronting the other bearing. When agents took a gander at the recording, further they saw that Kira's Chevrolet drove away at 9. 21 am. Disappointingly, it was basically impossible to see who was in the driver's seat. A report for someone who has gone missing was documented with police on Saturday, February 23, R.D., and the police division got an approach Monday, February 25, to report the finding of a dubious vehicle. Close to the retail outlet where Kira was utilized, there are two multi-story parking garages. Safety officers saw that a specific vehicle had been left there for a few days and mentioned a tow truck the tow transporter continued to inspect the vehicle prior to getting it and spotted dubious-looking red smears on the storage compartment top. Then, at that point, called the police. That vehicle ended up being Kira's white Chevy. There wasn't that much blood, only a couple of little stains, yet it was there, and that was an extremely terrible sign Kira's handbag which was recuperated from her unloaded vehicle had separate from court frames that seemed as though they had been downloaded from the web. Moreover, a little dim thing lying in the snow behind the vehicle grabbed the examiner's eye when they drew nearer. They saw a moved-up trunk mat that had dim-hued stains on the converse side. DNA testing verified that it was Kira Steger's blood. With lament, the specialists started to understand that Kira was probably presently not alive. This terrible disclosure was a serious shock to her loved ones. Their last any desire for seeing Kira again was lost yet. With this horde, questions emerged. To them, how could she bite the dust did she endure? And who might have despised her enough to have denied her, denied her of her life? The short fall of Kira's body intensified the matter, for it was significantly more challenging to persevere through the distress that had come to pass for them. Without it, the analyst's first concern currently was to distinguish the individual who deserted the vehicle in the parking garage. The vehicle drove away from the house at 9.21 a.m. roughly 20 minutes after the fact the shopping center's cameras caught it. There were no cameras in the part where the vehicle was found, yet there was a camera aimed at the way that prompted the vehicle. The camera was situated close, where Kira's vehicle was situated in the wake of review, the recording from that camera, the analysts saw that a couple of moments after the white Chevrolet crashed into the parking garage, a man with a hood covering his head showed up in the recording. It was genuinely cold, and it didn't appear to be odd that the man was in a hoodie. However, the analysts needed to follow where he was going. It was seen that the hooded man made it across the road and strolled to a taxi stand where he had a short discussion with one of the drivers then, at that point, got into the vehicle and drove off. The police had the option to figure out which organization the taxes left in the parking area of the mall had a place with in view of the hour of the hooded man's collaboration. 
With the driver, it was quite easy for the police to recognize the tag number of that specific vehicle. The taxis were all equipped with GPS beacons, which uncovered that the hooded man closed his excursion a street or two away from Kira and Jeffrey's home, and afterward escaped the vehicle in the wake of paying money. As it left the area, the taxi was trapped in the focal point of the very camera that had somewhat shot Kira and Jeffrey's home. Following two minutes, a hooded man entered the casing. The low goal of the recording made it challenging to see his face. However, the thing was striking was the white logo. His hoodie, as the examiners continued to see the recording, they saw the hooded man stroll into the house where Kira and Jeffrey resided. Kira had been missing, which made it almost sure that the hooded man was Jeffrey subsequent to getting a court order. The policeman went to the house from the get-go. It seemed to be a common mediocre house, however, that was exclusively from the beginning under nearer assessment. The criminalists began to find dim red stains in the room of the companions. There were a couple of stains on the wall next to the bed, and around one hundred of them on the sleeping pad. It was clear that the room had as of late been revised and cleaned when the criminology group showered luminol. The floor cover was basically shining. It had a ton of bloodstains on it that couldn't be distinguished by the unaided eye these stains started in the room and stretched out into the opposite side of the house legal sciences, affirmed that it was Kira's blood, and this further persuaded specialists that she was presently not alive. Other than looking through within the house police likewise analyzed Jeffrey's vehicle. The actual vehicle had no blood in it, nor did they notice any proof of a battle, yet they actually figured out how to find something of interest a service station receipt was found in Jeffrey's vehicle gave an hour and forty minutes before Kira's vehicle was left in the shopping center parking garage. In view of the receipt data, the buy was made with Jeffrey's card investigators, continued to that service station to audit the security film. The recording caught Jeffrey topping off his vehicle, then heading inside and pulling out cash from an ATM. This recording gave a brief look at Jeffrey's face and showed that he had a logo on his coat in the chest region that seemed to be the logo on the man from the prior film based on this recording, and all proof found in the house 39-year-old Jeffrey Trevino was put nabbed. He was brought to the station for addressing, and was presently the prime and just suspect promptly from the cross-examination room. Jeffrey arrived at his lawyer, who encouraged him to practice his entitlement to stay quiet. The police had adequate proof to charge him. However, the most undeniable proof of his culpability would be the body nobody had any uncertainty that Kira was dead. The police all together and a few workers went through months looking for her in late walk as the snowdrift began to clear workers found an unusual sack by the side of the road at Keller Lake a couple of miles from Trevino's home and called the police the pack contained a bloodied cushion, a shirt, and a bra. The criminology group connected the finding to Kira, as her DNA was distinguished on the things the lake was as yet encrusted with ice, which hampered the hunt, yet at the same time, jumpers overviewed the water body. Still they tracked down no remaining parts in it. The region around the lake was looked through different times, utilizing four inquiry canines, prepared to find bodies, however this also was unproductive, over two months following Kira's vanishing on May 8, 2013. The Holy Person Paul Police Division got an upsetting call. The male guest let the administrator know that he had seen what had all the earmarks of being a dead body in the Mississippi stream. What cops recuperated from the water did really end up being a body. There were no garments on it. Dental records discovered that it was the collection of Kira Steger she experienced extreme gruff power injury to her temple, and a cracked forefinger on her left hand in view of the level of deterioration the clinical analysts were unequipped for laying out a definite reason for death. Utilizing the new proof agents attempted to recreate the timetable of occasions paving the way to Kira's demise and the occasions that followed. They hypothesized that when Kira and Jeffrey returned home, he became mindful or saw that she was messaging another person. Kira was reluctant to show the correspondence to her significant other so. All in all, he strongly grabbed her telephone away from her 
and broke her finger in the wake of seeing the heartfelt correspondence Geoffrey developed considerably. More maddened and furiously ended Kira's life and afterward attempted to cover proof of the wrongdoing. He utilized her vehicle to head to the house, put the body in the storage compartment, then went to a service station, and from that point to the stream where he discarded the body. He consequently drove back home, unloading the pack containing Kira's pad and garments, and route the following morning he went to a service station and took out cash from an ATM since he realized that after he left Kira's vehicle in the shopping center's parking area, he would need to pay for a taxi and it would be smarter to do as such in real money. In the wake of discarding Kira's vehicle, Jeffrey returned home and worked the remainder of the day on cleaning the house with his dishonesty. Jeffrey expected to convey the feeling that Kira had driven away in her vehicle without help from anyone else that morning, and that she was completely fine. Anyway, on account of observation cameras, his arrangement fizzled. In October 2013, a jury sentenced 39-year-old Jeffrey Trevino agreeing with the protection that his demonstrations were not planned, and that the wrongdoing was the result of a warmed and unexpected contention following the disclosure of his significant other's betrayal. Preceding the sentence being declared by the adjudicator, Kira's relatives offered their expressions. This beast is a determined lawbreaker, said Carrie Ann Steger, Kira's sister. He merits no kindness, Kira's mom Marcy expressed. That Trevino surely made her little girl pay. He unloaded my little girl, like a piece of waste, into the country's most contaminated waterway. She said, still. Her dad Jay expressed out loud, Anything the discipline it won't ever compensate for the aggravation Trevino has caused their family. Regardless of how long you give Mr. Trevino, it's insufficient never enough, he said in November 2013, Jeffrey Trevino was given a 27. And a half-year jail sentence, he will become qualified for parole in 2031. Absolutely. If you enjoyed the introduction to Unfit Frame, feel free to hit the like button to show your support. Additionally, don't hesitate to leave a comment sharing your thoughts, suggestions, or any specific topics you'd love to see covered on the channel. Your engagement is valued and helps shape the content to better suit the interests of the Unfit Frame community. Thanks for being a part of the journey.